About three years ago, I released my GOAT pyramid, featuring 30 of what I believe to be the greatest NBA players of all time. And it's okay, but it could, uh, it could use some work. So today, we're going to be updating the NBA GOAT pyramid. Today's video is brought to you by SeatGeek. A new NBA season is upon us. Just look at it. Ain't it beautiful? And with the season underway, SeatGeek is here to get us back in on the action. Check this out. Just download the SeatGeek app and use the promo code JIMMY to get $20 off your first order. SeatGeek makes buying tickets easier than ever before with a rating system that lets you know which tickets are a good deal and which tickets are a bad deal. If it's green, that's a banger. You're getting a good deal there. Red? Not so much. I've been using SeatGeek for years. It's simple, it's easy, and it's a surefire way to get the best deal for your tickets. Whether it's a concert, basketball game, football, baseball, festival, SeatGeek's got it all. Download the app, use promo code JIMMY, and get $20 off your first order today. A few weeks ago, Shaq shared this basketball goat pyramid on Instagram. And I only know this because people were tagging me in the comments thinking it was mine. But it's not. The dead giveaway was LeBron being on tier 3. Also, current day Steph on tier 4 was a massive red flag. And a pretty solid player by the name of Hakeem Olajuwon was nowhere to be found on this pyramid at all. So, as cool as it would be to have Shaq share some content from the channel, this NBA GOAT pyramid is from someone else. But it did get me thinking. With all of the events that have taken place over the last 4 NBA seasons, I think it's time we update our GOAT pyramid. So here's the pyramid I made three years ago, May 23rd, 2019 to be exact. Which means since this video was released, four new teams have been crowned champions, four MVPs have been awarded, and there has been three and a half seasons worth of NBA context to consider for our new pyramid. Now I want to keep this new pyramid at 30 players like our original one. So if I add any players, I unfortunately have to take players off as well. And just like with my original GOAT pyramid, there are a few factors I'm going to be considering throughout this process. A player their peak, which I value more than longevity, their accomplishments and hardware, their skill and ability, and even the era that they played in. And of course, just like with my original GOAT pyramid, these selections are all based on my personal opinion. So with that out of the way, let's make some changes to this pyramid. So first things first, I have to make one massive adjustment to the top of this pyramid. Some may agree with it, some may not. But after winning his fourth championship and fourth finals MVP while climbing every all-time leaderboard over the last four seasons, LeBron James has earned a spot in tier one. Because at this point, the all-time discussion has virtually become Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and then everyone else. I still have MJ as the GOAT, but the gap between MJ and LeBron feels smaller than the gap between LeBron and whoever comes next. So I feel this change was necessary and well-earned. But that leaves us with three players on tier two, and that just looks weird. So when considering peaks and accolades and impact on the game and every other factor I can conjure up, I've decided to move Bill Russell and Larry Bird up to tier two. In our original pyramid, I had Magic on tier two and Bird on tier three. But with LeBron moving up, this gives room for Bird and Magic to be on the same tier as they should be. In Bill Russell, 11 rings, greatest defensive player of all time, there's not much to be said here. Now there's two players in particular who have solidified their legacies over the last four seasons and have earned spots on tier three with Shaq, Hakeem, Duncan, and Wilt. Those players are of course, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Since 2019, Steph has proven without a shadow of a doubt that he's the greatest shooter of all time. And after winning his fourth championship and first finals MVP last season, he's made the jump into tier three. Steph's brilliance and consistency season after season has extended his prime past where I think most fans would have ever considered. Now in his 13th season, at 34 years old, he's not only one of the best players in the league, he's putting together arguably the best season of his historic career. And the same could be said for Kevin Durant. Rant. He's got all the hardware, a league MVP, two championships, and two finals MVPs. But what has bumped Durant from tier four into tier three is his relentless consistency as a generational talent. Since 2019, he's made two more All-NBA teams while averaging 29, seven and six. And this has earned him the jump from tier four to tier three. And that brings us to tier four, which has some pretty major changes to it. And our first change comes with John Stockton, who gets demoted into tier five, which puts him at about the fifth or sixth greatest point guard of all time, behind Magic, Steph, Oscar, and Isaiah. Scottie Pippen also got demoted to tier five. 
I made this decision because despite Scotty's critical role throughout the Bulls dynasty, his talents as an individual player just don't warrant him a spot amongst players like Oscar Robertson, Carl Malone, and Julius Irving. And unfortunately, Dwayne Wade and Isaiah Thomas get demoted into Tier 5 as well. All-time great players. But being in Tier 4 means a player is, at worst, a top 21 player of all time. And I just don't consider Wade or Isaiah to be of that caliber but I would consider them both to be top 30 players of all time, with similar relatively short but brilliant peaks and playoff heroics throughout their careers. And with these changes, Tier 4 becomes a barren wasteland with only three players. So we've got some promoting to do. Starting with Jerry West, 12 All-NBA teams, Finals MVP, and five All-Defensive Team selections with career averages of 27, 6, and 5 a game. The only other players in NBA history to achieve these career averages are LeBron James and Kevin Durant. So the logo gets the bump into Tier 4. My next promotion goes to Moses Malone, three-time league MVP, a Finals MVP, and one of the greatest rebounders the game has ever seen. Honestly, he should have never been in Tier 5 to begin with, so let's put him where he truly belongs. And my last pair of promotions goes to Dirk Nowitzki and Kevin Garnett. The individual dominance of both KG and Dirk that spanned over two decades is matched by only a handful of all-time greats. But if not their sustained excellence over the course of 21 seasons, it was their massive peaks that earned them a spot in Tier 4. Two of the most skilled, versatile, and imposing big men the game has ever seen. Which leaves us with Tier 5 and some tough decisions to make. There are only two players that made my original GOAT pyramid that did not make the cut in my new pyramid, and those players are Bob Pettit and Allen Iverson. But with all these adjustments, there are now two spots open for two new players. Of all the players who missed the cut the first time around, the players who I considered for my new pyramid were Giannis Antetokounmpo, Nikola Jokic, James Harden, Chris Paul, and Kawhi Leonard. Of all the active players in the NBA, aside from LeBron, Steph, and Durant, these are the only players who even have a shot at making the pyramid. And since my original pyramid three and a half years ago, Nikola Jokic has made four All-NBA teams, three of them being first-team selections. He's won back-to-back -back MVPs, he's led the Nuggets to the Conference Finals, and he's put up two of the most historically efficient and productive seasons in league history. It's only a matter of time before Jokic joins the GOAT pyramid but at the moment, it's just a bit too soon. Now for the case of James Harden, I had to sit and really think about his potential addition to the pyramid. Harden had one of the highest offensive peaks in league history, averaging 31, eight and six a game over the course of six seasons. He's won an MVP, he's made seven all NBA teams, and he's just one of seven players in NBA history to win a scoring title and an assist title. But where James Harden falls short compared to other players on the pyramid is his performance in the playoffs. He just hasn't broke through on the biggest stage, and the heliocentric offense that allowed him to put up such unbelievable stat lines became a weak point to his teams in the postseason. So for now, James Harden does not crack the GOAT pyramid. The next player I considered was Chris Paul, one of the most complete point guards in recent years. And despite his lack of playoff success, he has managed to completely transform every team he's been a part of. CP3 is a tricky one because as I touched on before, if you compare Chris Paul to John Stockton, who is in tier five on my pyramid, their careers are almost identical. And after CP3's first trip to the finals last season, their overall numbers and accomplishments only become more and more similar with time. Chris Paul had a higher peak, but Stockton's record-breaking ability to generate offense for nearly two decades while being a lockdown perimeter defender gives him a razor-thin edge over CP3, in my opinion. So for now, Chris Paul doesn't quite crack Tier 5, which leaves us with the two new additions to my GOAT pyramid, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Kawhi Leonard. Now, since my original pyramid, which was released just before the end of the 2019 season, Giannis has went from a great, young, ascending player to a certified all-time great. In just three and a half years, Giannis won a championship, two MVPs, a finals MVP, defensive player of the year, four all-NBA first teams, four all-defensive first teams, and an all-star game MVP, while averaging 30 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists per game. That's a pretty solid three and a half year stretch for the big man. So I had to add Giannis to the pyramid and I'm going to put him comfortably in tier four. And with our second and final addition, Kawhi Leonard is added to tier five. 
My original pyramid was created three weeks before Kawhi won his second championship and second finals MVP, which led to his greatness stock skyrocketing. Now, Kawhi is a tough player to rank among any all-time scenario because when he's playing, he's one of the greatest players to ever lace up. But over the last few seasons, he just hasn't laced up a whole lot. But it's impossible to look past his two finals MVPs and his run as the best two-way player in the NBA. So Kawhi gets added to the pyramid, but just barely sneaking into tier five. And there it is, my updated NBA GOAT pyramid. And I wanna point out a few interesting things that I noticed throughout the process of making this. If we break down the pyramid by position, there are six point guards, three shooting guards, eight small forwards, six power forwards, and seven centers featured on the pyramid. I initially thought centers would have the largest presence here with big men running the league for nearly six decades, but turns out a well-rounded, versatile wing has been the ideal archetype for a potential NBA great. If we break the GOAT pyramid down by the decade that each player was drafted in, then we'll find that among all players who made it onto the pyramid, four of them were drafted in the 50s, three were drafted in the 60s, two were drafted in the 70s, a whopping 10 players were drafted in the 80s, five in the 90s, four in the 2000s, and two in the 2010s. And since most players peak in the decade after they were drafted, it could be said that the 90s were the best era for NBA basketball, or at least the era that featured the most all-time great talent. Giannis is the youngest player featured on this pyramid at just 28 years old, completely bypassing tier five altogether and landing on tier four after just nine seasons in the NBA. This puts Giannis somewhere between the 15th and 20th best player all time. Giannis' ascent amongst the greatest players of all time was pretty quick, but we've seen a rapid climb to basketball royalty like this before. Back in 1996, the NBA announced the 50 greatest NBA players to commemorate the league's 50th anniversary. And despite some backlash on the selection, a 24-year-old Shaquille O'Neal was selected as a top 50 player all time after just four seasons in the NBA. The second youngest player that was selected for that exclusive greatest 50 club was Scottie Pippen, who was 31. Back in 2009, sports writer and analyst Bill Simmons released his original basketball pyramid that featured 96 players. At the time, LeBron James was just 24 years old in his sixth NBA season. He hadn't won a league MVP yet, he had only made one trip to the finals at that point, and he just hit his peak. But a young LeBron not only made Bill's GOAT basketball pyramid, he was already so transcendently good that Simmons selected him as the 20th greatest player in NBA history. And after the last half decade Giannis has put together, he has slingshotted himself onto the same trajectory. Now I have to mention the handful of players that just narrowly missed the cut. Those players were Steve Nash, Patrick Ewing, Allen Iverson, Jason Kidd, Bob Pettit, Bob Cousy, James Harden, Chris Paul, Nikola Jokic, and George Mikan. All great players, but when the spots are limited to just 30, the criteria to make the GOAT pyramid is a hefty one. I imagine if we redo this pyramid again in five years, we'll see Jokic on here, we might see Luka Doncic on here, or possibly James Harden and Chris Paul. But for now, this is my new, and I think improved, NBA GOAT pyramid. Let me know what you think. Which players are too low? Which players are too high? Who was left out that you think should have made the cut? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, until next time.